Hello everyone and welcome back to more spoopy time in the letter! Who shit! We are back for more! Oh my god. Oh, we are back once again in this scary, scary place. <laughs> We're in the last episode. Uh, let's see. So we started off the day, you know, the very next day we promised, like we promised Ash, we met up with him and we went to go see this doctor, no, not doctor, Sir Andrew. Basically he's, he was a professor and he was studying in like urban legends and shit like that. So like he, he's a very scientific, you know, approach to this whole curse thing that we're experiencing right now. So we told him his story, our story. We told him our story, kind of like the whole, like a gleaned over version, like, like T TLDR kind of thing. So Ash, of course, uh, kind of like picked up on our hesitancy to really disclose any details, but we kind of like shook him off. We're like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, I don't need to, you know, you know, tell you anything else. This is what I told you. This is what I like. This is all that I, I discovered kind of thing, like the letter and the mansion. That was it. And now I think I'm cursed. So we had a conversation at the cafe with this Andrew uh, professor. And uh, yeah, and his only conclusion was basically like, you know, don't take it at face value, whatever the situation is. And you know, he's just very kind of like, again, a very scientific approach, very logical standpoint about this whole curse thing. Of course, uh, because we've experienced it firsthand, we are more or less more puzzled with, you know, how to deal with it than, than anything else after we came out of that conversation. So instead of answers, answers, getting answers, we only got more questions. So. We don't know who this ghost lady is, we don't know what she wants, but anyways, we head back- No! Ash drops us off at the park after treating us to some ice cream and he gives us a little charm too and he's being such a sweetie and he was apologizing by being, you know, by upsetting us by what he said before when we first told him about, about the curse. And so we, we kind of like, we had something, something going on, but then of course Isabella didn't want to like pursue it anymore. Um, we left, you know, Ash left us in the park, we ran around and we found a cat, and that cat belonged to, um, Miss Macaulay, or Marianne Macaulay, who is the interior designer, so, kinda got her, kinda rubbed her the wrong way when we were talking about her cat, because, of course, in other cultures, cow, a black cat is a symbol of bad luck, but in other people's cultures, a symbol of good luck, there was a bit of miscommunication, and, you know, uh, Marianne kinda took offense to that, and she kinda left it on a sour note, so she kinda, like, went off she's like yeah i gotta go now kind of thing because you know my cat ran away from the vet and that's all he i came here to get him so yeah to get her i'm sorry it's, a, it's actually a her not a him so she got offended by that too and so yeah and before she left uh she asked us about the real estate about the the house and if it's sold yet yeah, if the deal's closed but we basically just said there's a few paperwork left but it's you know it's as good as theirs kind of thing so yeah that was it and of course she's happy about that so we go home we went home that night, we were having dinner, and we were watching the news, and all of a sudden, on the news, we heard that Rose Cooper, our mentor, our colleague, our friend, our dear friend of a long time ago, is now dead. Yes, she's been found in her apartment, and it seems like she's been murdered, okay, because she was lying in her own pool of blood, and all around her room was basically the, word, the words, help me, scrawled all about it. And of course, the people, the police and the authority thinks it's a homicide that is connected to this like Anselm Butcher murderer who has like a, a calling card kind of like that. So that's that. But of course Isabella freaks out. She's in denial. She starts really like she's you know she's uh, clearly very upset and she's like really grief stricken because you know Rose is dead and she thinks that it's all her fault because she has shown her the letter and she thinks it's in connection with the letter and the curse. So very next day she gets an email from work. As, uh, from her employer saying basically that everyone who's working needs to come in for this mandatory meeting and to sort shit out okay but any no no um any mentions of like is a of what's it called rose yet of like hurt the uh, situation but anyways we chose we had a choice to either go to work or to not but we chose to go to work because you know what's the point of just staying at home and grieving kind of thing whereas like i know it's it sucks and it's you know i don't know i just felt like it wouldn't do isabella good to just kind of wallow in, in this you know this black hole of grief and sadness and depression you know kind of thing like it, ju it would just fester basically so i had to go to work in order to like kind of take her mind off of things and to maybe you know find some more information about this so 
she does, she goes to work, she gets to work, and then, you know, she gets Rose's work from the employer, and then she stays really late at the office to finish that, finish those stuff, and then she overhears on the radio how, 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 how there's people who are missing, and the police, of course, is looking into it, and it turns out all the l names that were listed of people who were missing were somehow involved with the preparation of the mansion. And so that kind of clicks with Isabella, she's like, oh my god, like, of course, it's starting to connect, I'm starting to see the, the bigger picture, but of course, before, when she gets up to leave, and she, you know, she goes out, before anything really happens, the printer goes off, she goes to check it out, of course, it's the letter, it's all bloody and shit, she freaks out, and in that moment of, like, you know, weakness, the lights go out, the power shuts off, and of course, the ghost shows up, the ghost lady shows up, and she's, she's, she was stalking, well, not stalking, well, she is actually stalking, if you could put it that way. But anyways, the ghost lady was standing in the only exit that was out of the office. Of course, we couldn't go, we couldn't escape. There was no, uh, no other uh, exit point. We accidentally got, caught her attention by dropping the pen that was in our hand. And of course, she turns around full 180 kind of thing like an owl. And then of course, Isabella ducks behind the desk. And we had a little quick time of it, which I nearly fucked up on. <laughs> I was totally prepared for it, but I wasn't prepared for it. So anyways, she hid behind- she hide- hids underneath the desk. And then she's just praying to God and to whatever higher being that she wouldn't get spotted. And of course, I got right as the ghost lady is passing our desk, we switch points of view and now we are with Hannah in this amazing, fancy looking like um, party thing. I don't even know where the hell this is, but anyways, we are we are Hannah right now. So we leave Isabella Santos to her doom, whatever the hell happened to her, and we are here now with with um, Hannah, with Hannah, 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 Hannah. Anyways, we have a new profile like I had promised you guys for Hannah, so we can basically Hannah, or we can basically read up on what on who she is as a person, and you know a little bit of background on her. So anyway, so Hannah Wright Nay Nay Evans is her full name, and so she's 31 years old. She's a Tauros. Okay, cool. So she's an heiress, well, occupation heiress. That's I would love that occupation. Anyways, for, former finance manager. Ooh, that's still a pretty good job. Uh, she's British. She's an angel angelic, angelican, Anglican, Anglican. Is that it? Okay. Anyways, that's her religion. Uh, she has a master's in business administration, major in accounting, and she likes bourbes, bourbes, what bourbes? Oh my God, French. Anyways, very bougie. Dogs, fashion, parties and dancing, the beach, children, iconic women, uh, charity and math. Oh my gosh, she likes math. God. Anyway, so of, of the Luxborn upper class, uh, Hannah is used to living a life of luxury. Of course she is. Absent parents made her crave for attention though, something she gained from her private tutors and nannies instead. Uh, okay, that sucks. It was never enough however. She studied hard to make- uh, she studied hard in order to make her parents proud going into business so that she could work alongside them. The challenge in her otherwise privileged life was certainly a thrill for her at the very least. So, okay. She had many suitors, dating different men and women. Oh, wow, so she's bi. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, but it was through work that she met Luke. It was love at first sight for her, of course. Upon her parents' death, Luke proposed to her. Okay. <laughs> that was the move that led to the merging of white companies. That was the move that led to the merging of Wright's Enterprise and Evans Incorporated and her subsequent retirement. Their, their seven year marriage is strained, but Hannah, but Hannah tries her best to make it work. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, seven years of marriage. Wow, damn. But anyways, okay. So there's a little bit about her. She seems like a decent girl. Like, okay. Like, she, she genuinely is in love with this man who doesn't really seem to be interested in her anymore. Okay, but anyways, let's see where this is going to take us. So, it is far too easy to get them to pay attention, enraptured. They hang on to my every word and follow my every move. All of it would have been stifling had I not grown used to such stares. Most are respectful, some are hostile if, I, if we are honest. And a few are downright inappropriate, duh. After all, I am... <laughs> One hot Hannah Rice. Yes, I'm Hannah Rice, one hot babe. There's a moment of agitation as a familiar but less than welcome face approaches me with a suggestive smirk on his with a suggestive smirk on his face. No boy, you can't you can't tap this. Of course, I have to keep the benevolent smile and greet him as I greet any other any good friend. Yeah. 
After all, this man can turn heads, being famous in his own right. Officer Lee! What a pleasant surprise. Oh. I didn't think you'd have the time to attend tonight's party. Okay. Well, should we should we play as Hannah now? Should we should we change the voice and just lower it and then we'll we'll turn it back up once we switch points of view? Let's do that. Let's be Hannah. Let's let's for now lower Hannah's like thing and then maybe put up Isabella just in case she shows up. <laughs> Goodness gracious, I hope that girl's okay. <laughs> so yes, Officer Lee, what a surprise was a what a pleasant surprise. I didn't think you'd have the time to attend tonight's party. He is more Luke's friend than mine, really, and I'm quite sure I only invited his wife. Well, of course, he seems really eager to see us, clearly. Much like I am only friends with the chief of inspec with the chief inspector because of Luke, Luke is only friends with Rochelle because of me. Okay, so there's of course connections, all right. So unlike how I treated Lee, however, Luke never hid his animosity for the Lee, ma Lee matriarch. It was an odd sort of friendship where we would have awkward double dates. Yes. <laughs> I don't even recall his first name. It started with an N, I think. I might be wrong. Aside from being chief inspector of Luxborn Police, his wife, Rochelle Lee, nay, nay Vance, owns a general electronics company. Fridges and freezers, mostly. Okay. Oh, I always have time for my favorite social art couple. Might I say, you look positively ravishing tonight. Ew. <laughs> God, I just got... Ew. <laughs> I see the husband isn't with you. Oh, oh, God. That just sounds gross. Oh, get away. The way he eyes me up is enough to make my skin crawl. Yeah. <laughs> Can we leave? Can we leave him? I just wish Luke is here to fend off the more unseemly of our peers. You know the ones. Yep. The men who are just a bit too friendly, staring too long at my assets and getting close just because my husband is not here. And despite being married. God. And to think they have the gall to do this at my own party, right? The nerve. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any of it. In my own house, if I might add. In front of my salad! But like any high society woman worth her salt, I know how to handle it with grace and dignity. I wouldn't. I'd be like, ew, get the fuck away from me. I... I suppose you are looking pleasant as oh. well. Luke's busy with work, unfortunately. I didn't apply that, really? Hey, girl. Wait, oh, I didn't, yeah. We should apply. I should hit apply before, like... There you go. So yeah, I, I suppose you're looking pleasant as well. Looks, looks busy with work, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, Rochelle isn't here? Where's your wife? Where's your lovely wife that you're supposed to be so loyal to? Hmm, a shame. I do hope he isn't causing you much trouble. That husband of yours can be a bit tough sometimes, acting like he's still some young bachelor. Okay, it's like it's none of your business. The wife sends her regards and her apologies, but something came up with a doctor and she needed to attend to it. You know her, uh, being pregnant and all. Oh yeah, being pregnant and all, okay. You, so you have a kid, and you're, you're here, and you're making some sort of, like, you know, move on me. We make small talk, which I hate. Rather, I'm forced to do so, as he would not leave my side after finding his place there. Much to my chagrin, I've been I've been extricated from the few who flock in hopes of flattering, for I can tolerate them far better than Lee. Yes, I'd rather them than him right now. Yeah. He's a nice enough person and I adore his wife, who is obviously the brains behind the two. But there is something unsettling about him. Yeah, no kidding. I do not trust him as much as I want to. Yep. His he rega he re he regales to me regale? Oh my god, I can't English. He regaled to me tales of the Luxborn Police Department, a different affair to the usual gossip I am privy to, and, though I loathe to admit, it is interesting nonetheless. I expect the topic of business to die out quickly, which would be understandable enough due to the confidential nature of its work, but no, he just spills the beans. But oh boy, was I wrong. So, we're in civvies, I steal and drive off with one of the police mobiles, right? In the mirror, I see the new tank chasing on foot and screaming about theft. My goodness gracious, he has no shame. The look on his face was priceless when I parked in the garage. Okay. Oh my, you made him chase you all the way home for a prank? What did Rochelle have to say, for the, have to say about that? Rochelle has a strong look. 
Rochelle has a strange love and hate affair with Lee. Oh, wow. He is a married man who did not grow up past his early 20s, judging by the way he acts. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, they've been married for a good 20 years. Goodness gracious. Well, age is just a number, evidently. A lifetime if you compare it to my marriage of 7 years with Luke. I, on the other hand, well, Luke is no Lee. I should be happy about that, I suppose. Yes. Uh, although my darling did have his moments. Hey, the wife pulled my hair and gave me a good talking to, though. Besides, we live in a flat a block away, so it wasn't much of a grand chase. Okay. Weren't you living in a house near the countryside? Move for work, you know. Or you probably don't. No. Uh, no, I don't. But a flat in downtown, I suppose if that's what you like. Oh, it's all right. Hate that tiny place. No matter how convenient it can be for work, 55 square yards are not enough when you need to get away from the wife. Wow. Why are you married to her? God. I wouldn't mind a place away from the city. Even started looking at the ads. Okay. I spied an interesting lot, actually. Heard it was finally put up for sale. Or that something mansion. You know the one. The one with all the ghost stories. Oh, is this like way before she started like actually looking into buying the mansion, really? I know what he's talking about. There are really only a few urban legends around here. It's uh, the Urban Guard Mansion. Uh, that's the one. How uh, worthy of a king it is. I'd buy it myself, but Rochelle would only gripe if I brought it up to her. Yeah, I don't think she's the kind of lady that would, you know, appreciate it. Not to mention all the expenses a place like that. It would be a real fixer-upper. Indeed. You also have to find someone willing to work there with how superstitious people can be. Uh-huh. Uh, if it becomes a problem, just hire someone to do an exorcism, right? Get a priest. Call Gandhi. I don't know. Actually, I do know of someone who could be up to the task. Who? What? You know an exorcist? You remember the Ludgates party at their Christchurch summer residence? No. Of course, it was an excellent story. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Everything was so classy too. Such good taste. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Oh my god. I don't even know. Oh, well, that place was a big star until they hired out this interior designer oh. and they turned it into a bloody palace. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is definitely before she bought the mansion because interior designer, I'm pretty sure he's talking about Mary Ann Macaulay. She worked for the Exodus for their apartment in Soho too, and they recommended her when we were looking up pieces for our beach house in Porto Colom. Okay. Rich people talk, alright. I think I have a business card, right? It oh. No, I must have left it in my other jacket. Oh, too bad. Anyway, she's called, uh, what's her name, uh, Macaulay, uh, Mary Ann, I believe, yes. It's Marianne with an I and it's together. God. But truly, if anyone were to get that place in McCullough, well, they'd be the envy and the talk of the town. Okay. Oh, well, if you put it that way, I, mu I might just snatch it up myself. For myself. Really? Just that? Just like that? Just because you're like, oh yeah, you know, people are gonna talk about it. It's, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it just to grab the attention. This place is starting to feel a bit small lately anyway. Small. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Sure, a three-story penthouse might not fit the, de the definition of small for some people. Yeah. Okay, maybe a lot of people. I'm glad that she's realizing her little, her bougie ways. <laughs> her bougie way of thinking. But it isn't big enough to have grand parties in. Girl. <laughs> As it is, I only invited about 30 people in this one. 30 people to this one, and it already feels cramped in here. 30. Oh well, yeah, true. Yeah. Okay. It certainly would be nice if it if I didn't have to ride an elevator up and down several floors before I can get anywhere as well. But still, all Luke's words and not mine. Okay, so it's Luke that's like, oh my god, such a fucking waste of time to just ride elevators up to my place. Like, I don't need that. <laughs> Besides, I have been looking for a good anniversary gift. Yes, she did mention that. Luke might like this one. Alright. I hope he likes it cursed. <laughs> Where is he anyway? <laughs> okay, October 21st, Friday. Still with Hana. Okay, who the hell are you? Luke is dressed to the nines as he usually is, and he looks ready for whatever the day will throw at him. Okay, let's see, new journal entry, let's talk about him. Let's 
plot, yeah, let's read. So Han and Wright threw a party in the penthouse at the cache. Uh, the, city's most powerful were the city's most powerful were seen, including Chief Inspector Harvey Lee of the Luxborn Police Department. From him, the socialite heard of the Ermengarde Mansion's upcoming open, open house, and of the interior designer, Marianne Macaulay. Yes. So that's how, that's how it all began. So yes. His butler and valet wait at his side, just in case he isn't as ready as he looks. Oh, so he's butler and valet, okay. Oh sure, that is normal. What is confusing me is the fact that he ha What is confusing me is the fact that he is on his way out of the penthouse, considering we won't have anywhere to go until much later. Yeah, where are you going, girl? Where are you going, honey? Where are you going? I am to attend the Triad Autumn Tasting. I do believe I informed you of this two weeks ago. Uh, did you? Because I don't remember. Yes, and might I remind you that I had that stricken off your schedule? Because one, the doctor told you to stop consuming so much alcohol. And two, I informed you a few days ago about the open house we are going to attend in its place. I've even found this marvelous interior designer, Mary Ann Macaulay. She always gets the names wrong. <laughs> I guess it's her thing. It's a three and a half hour drive to Cardiff. I don't have time for this! Yes, you do, honey! This is like that little party you threw all over again! You don't inform me of it, and you expect me to stay and be a gracious host when I have business elsewhere. Oh my gosh. You know how I operate, Hana. Unless this was penciled in, I am sticking to my schedule. No. <laughs> if I may intrude, the madam is correct. Your physician did insist you moderate your drinking. Unless you wish to incur acute pancreatitis. Yes. Would you rather deteriorate your health, or would you rather, you know, come with me to just see this big house? And you did have this open house penciled in last Wednesday morning. Yes, so you're coming with me. Bullocks. I don't remember doing so. Well, you must be drunk. Well, you did. While well, very hungover, in fact. Yes. <laughs> I figured. Hungover, drunk, same shit. He did. Moaned about me being too loud, but gave in after some pushing. Perhaps that was a bit too cruel and manipulative of me, but it got the job done. Whose side are you on? Um, come on, Luke. You promised we'd do whatever I want this weekend. Gordon Bennett, fine. I am giving this house tour of yours a chance. Good. But if it proves to be a waste of time, I am going to Cardiff, and you are going to take a cab home. Wow. Thanks, sweetie. Love Are you we too. Clear? Yeah, love you too. It's just a bit of a husband and wife tit for tat, isn't it? All couples have their arguments. Not like this girl. If he told me that I'm gonna take a, take a cab home, if, you know, if I waste his time on his schedule, like girl, <laughs> girl, that'd be gonna be a throwdown. <laughs> Once the honeymoon phase is over, as they seem to call it, reality sets in that you and your partner might not always see eye to eye. Yeah, I know you're gonna have disagreements and like some a little bit of bantering, but like you still need to work things out, you know, in a civilized manner, compromising, you know? Perhaps it has been the years. Seven of them is nothing to scoff at. I just cannot bloody believe I agreed to this. I was really looking forward to the triad tasting. Well, too bad. Though sometimes I think it's something a bit more than just simple disagreements, and I have to stop myself from wondering where we went wrong. There's always the triad Christmas tasting in Manchester next month, and that'll only be an hour and a half drive. Yeah, there you go. Thank God. Thank God, Johan. Johans. I don't even know how you pronounce your name. Have I been neglectful? Have I offended? Have I acted shamefully? Yes, but Cardiff... Cardiff! Ugh. Stop whinging and get your ass in the car and we can go to this fucking open house. Certainly any problem can be certainly any problem can be discussed. Yes, it's called couple counseling. As long as I as long as he doesn't turn me away. Well, there goes my good mood. Oh, well, boohoo. Are you happy now, Hana? Yes, now let's go. Remain silent, defend yourself. Why must he treat me this way? God, yeah, why are you like this? Why are you being such a little bitch for? God, okay, defend myself. Yes, I am very happy, Luke, because for once in a very long time, we are doing what I want. I'm pretty sure that's not going to give me any points with him, but like, oh, it kind of did. I remain resilient. I'm ecstatic, understood? And this would be perfect if you stop acting like a child who needs their nappy changed. 
Yeah, you stop acting like such a little bitch. We will be having we will be leaving after lunch for the Ermengarde mansion. Uh, you are going to park your rear in the car and keep mum and you What? You are going to park your rear in the car and keep mum and you are going to behave during the during the tour. Needless to say, Luke looks a bit shocked at my little outburst. He opened and closed his mouth a few times, struggling to reply before he crosses his arms and look well to look well like a moping child. Any more rules for this little excursion of yours, your highness? Oh, don't put, don't get me. Girl, you don't even want to go there. No wine. No wine? Yes, no wine. Unacceptable! <laughs> I am already not allowed to the tasting, and you would deprive me of that simple pleasure? Yes, because you're destroying your liver now. Shut the hell up! If you if I see you take one sip today, I will put the stocks under lock and key. Do you understand me? Don't forget the bottles he keeps in his dresser. Thanks, Johans. I, I already knew you're. I always I always know you're a homeboy. Whose side are you on? My side. So shut up. How many times in one day can you ask that? Yes. As many times as I need you, traitor. <laughs> well, there we go. Let's go. I need to take charge of this man, like this man baby here. God. So the ride into the mansion is quiet, with Luke having stared out the window the entire way, not paying attention to anything around him. Oh, it's because he's sulking. Meanwhile, I am conflicted. I don't know if I should apologize for changing his plans like that. But by the time we arrive at the mansion and I see his eyes light up in genuine interest, apologizing is the last thing on my mind. Alright. Okay. So the whole affair with the Ermengarde Mansion is certainly an interesting experience. The place has been renovated and restored by the owners to what they claim to be acceptable standards. The mansion itself looks like something befitting a fairy tale or a period piece. It is tastefully decorated and, with a little bit of love and attention, I'm sure it can be a place Luke and I can call home. And the number of other prospective buyers and the number of other prospective buyers that have come from the powerful and wealthy of Luxborn certainly did not disappoint, marking this estate as prime property. The Lees are amongst the group who went with the Rose Woman, and I saw a few other notable faces, although I did not really feel like mingling. Unfortunately for every one of them, the Wrights are interested in buying. Okay. Where... who are we? What? What's been bugging my mind, however, is that Isabel. Okay, so we're still Hannah. What is her problem? Oh, okay, so we time skipped and we're now in the tour. Okay. Uh, I still don't quite understand what is happening. One moment, she's scrambling to give us the paperwork to finalize the sale. And then, she's panicking over some sort of prank letter or another. Dear me, is Isabel alright? It is apparent with the way she shakes and by the paler and by the pallor of her skin, something has really shaken her up. Isabella, do you need me to call that ambulance? Yes. I am worried, but it is I am worried, but it will be best if she attended eh. I am worried, but she but it will be best if she is attended to by someone more familiar to her, like her partner. Okay, but even then the girl refuses Rose's offer to uh, offer a drink and looks just about ready to make a run for it. Okay. No. I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Okay. Excuse me. I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. Okay. So, yes. We're going back with this whole, like, little moment here. So, and she does so, just as I predicted, and her partner follows like a concerned mother. There is an awkward air among us as we are left in the wake of whatever that was. Okay, so we're... When, when we had our conversation with Rose, this is what's going on with them people right here. Okay, let's see what's happened at the very same time. The others murmur and gossip with each other, speaking of the poor daft girl and telling the tale to whoever was not audience to the act in the first place. It doesn't take too long for the woman, Rose, to return and pull us aside into the study for what I rightfully assume is damage control. Okay. Alright, so Rose invites Marianne in too, hoping to apologize to her as well. But the, but the woman refuses, saying that she is not one of her clients anyway. That leaves myself, Rose, and Luke, the last all too eager to make himself comfortable in a study he's, not, he's no doubt already claimed as his own. I can't apologize enough about what just happened. Please forgive Isabella. Ah, it's all good. Yeah. She's been under a lot of pressure lately. 
She's young and all those rumors about this being haunted just got to her head. I know, but like, in all the good reasons though. All for good reasons. And it must be this terrible heat too. Not a drop of rain for days now. I know. Gosh. Are you sure it is wise to just let her go like that? Uh, where is the poor dear? She might get hurt. She's more likely to hurt somebody else, given what just happened. Oh, stop being such an ass, Luke. I told her to sit down and take a break. Already rang someone to pick her up, too. Oh, was that Rose is doing? Did she call Ash, actually? Wow. Uh, that might be for the best, dear. But please, we're here to talk about the mansion, yes? Why, I absolutely adore it, don't you, Luke? <laughs> Some of the rooms will certainly have to be... Uh, repurpose, we'll, cha we'll want to change the appliances and have Marianne take on the decor, but the whole thing is just lovely. I guess. It's certainly a lot roomier than our penthouse. Yes, duh, indeed. Exactly, lots of spaces for guest parties. L lots of space for guests, parties, a lot of room for little ones to run around too. Oh my goodness, little ones, and he's gonna be like, uh. Let's not discuss yeah. <laughs> that right now, Buttercup. <laughs> yep, he's like, uh. Of course, he would have commitment issues in this. Like, he's already married, they're already a strained relationship, and now he's like, oh, children. <laughs> anyway, I do think it would be a shame to let this mansion slip past us. Yes. But you haven't even finished touring the house. She's like, nope, I wanna buy it. Well, we like what we've seen. I am making her job easier for her, am I not? Uh, no need for loans or long price negotiations. We can just sign a contract and close the deal. Cause we rich. Really, you think the woman will be more happy about an easy sale? I know how these estate agents worked, how long they had to wait, and how much they had to spend even just for a single sale. Why, she should be jumping for joy by now, right? I'm sure the commission on this mansion is nothing to sneeze at, even if she has to split it with the even if she has to split it with the Isabel girl. Huh, do you think we could have horses here? Yes, they they mentioned a ranch or some shit like that already, so yes, they could, if they wanted to. Yes, those do sound nice, love. Uh, anyway, if anyone else is interested in buying this property, I assure you that I am able and willing to give a better offer, right? Like, name your price. I... Just, come on, give it to me, Rose. <laughs> a vineyard would be nice. Or maybe a... Uh, maybe hmm. a helicopter padding. Well, I don't know, that's what you wanted. And we do reward our people quite generously, Rose. Yeah, I got the moolahs, got the money, got the dollars. And so, if I were you, I would start on that paper war. Oh no, I didn't want that. Stop it. Helicopter pad. Yes, he wants a helicopter pad. Yes. I pause. <laughs> And there's a small moment of complete silence where Rose and I just stare incredulously at Luke. It's an unspoken understanding, a rule, between the two of us that we have to put on an act. With our social standing where image matters, it is also important to avoid making enemies. And to follow this rule is an easy feat for me. From youth, I have been the well-trained social butterfly, gracious and graceful. Luke, on the other hand... Wait, what Luke? No. What? what? Whatever would we need a helipad for? Well, he likes to play the fool sometimes, even if he is anything but. Uh, stop! God goodness, my keyboard is obviously possessed. As he throws me a wry smile, I shake my head and beckon Rose over. This is to be our home, and there is nothing she or anyone else can do to change my mind. This is a place that speaks of power and importance, and at the same time, of safety and comfort. Perhaps we can even have our family here. Yes, <laughs> there is definitely no better gift than this for our special date. Yes. And if you buy the mansion, a curse comes for free. Yay! Why? Everything here is absolutely wonderful. Yay! Okay, well, except for this ugly painting in the study. Why do we have that? Why is that there? <laughs> why is that? Why? 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 Who? What? <laughs> It looks like a bad fake of an Edward. Uh, it looks like a bad fake of an Edward Monk uh, painting. Yeah, Edward Monk. Edward Monk painting. Yeah. Here's the deal. I'm willing to pay 10% higher than your listing price. If anyone tries to outbid us, just add another 5%. I doubt anyone can, of course. Yes, because you know I'm rich. Or you know what? Just add 15% to the listing price, and we can sign all the paperwork now. I guess if that's what you want. That won't be any trouble. Okay. I don't have all the papers now. Didn't think this would be a quick sell. Oh, it's true. 
I'll have copies sent to you so you can look over them. Okay, great. But like, first, can we do something about that painting? <laughs> like, who the hell? Like, what? 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 Who? What? Who's in? No one in their right mind would want to have that painting. And be like, yeah, just give me that painting. I want that. I want to put it right there in my study, and I can just stare at it. God. And if you'd still like to finish the rest of the tour with Isabella's group, you're more than welcome to. She's like, no. And no, I think we're good here. We'd appreciate our private tour of the place a lot more, I think. All right. Should I let Marianne in, then? I uh, guess. Uh, Marianne? Yeah, that's her name. Marianne, the one you keep mispronouncing. All right. She's been waiting outside the study this whole time, hasn't she? I'll need to have a little chat with her to move this little mansion project forward. Please do. All right, Marianne. There's a look of apprehension when the other woman enters the study. Did you see something hella shady? Yet, yeah, like a professional, I see the moment when she steals herself and masks her worry. Admirable. Yes, admirable. We have this project then? Yes, we do. Of course. You Will you be needing anything from us? Having the floor plans would be a great start, just so that I can look at them beforehand. Okay. And if you could tell me when you're available for a meeting so that I can include it in my calendar? Okay, yes. Oh, is a meeting really the, all that necessary, Marianne? Uh, I guess we can send Johan to help you out. Ugh. <laughs> you two can start by getting rid of this ugly painting. God. <laughs> a hush falls upon the room at my request. What painting? <gasps> no one else sees it but us! <gasps> Shit! What? And lo and behold, the painting is gone! That's fucked up! That's so fucked up! Oh, shit! Oh, girl, you fucked. In its place, a mirror stands, which leads me to look at my own confused expression. Odd. Well, no matter. I would have lost my shit, girl! Whoa, back to the topic at hand. Marianne, dear, we are simply far too busy to meet up. Uh, free my schedule, uh, or perhaps maybe I should... Question the need for a meeting, free up my schedule. I think we should free up our schedule. Like, it doesn't hurt to. Come on, girl. Try to make an effort. Uh, but I guess I can free up a day to meet with you. I don't really need another Maudlin Monday reading about Mori anyway. Uh, the book club can function without me for one day. Yes, yeah, so we got like points for her too, yeah? Uh, cool. So yeah, I don't really need another Maudlin Monday reading about Mori, but about Mori anyway. The book club can function without me for one day. Uh, what time will we be seeing each other? How does lunch sound? Besides, my house has a higher priority over book club, right? Why, we can hold the next meeting in this place. Yeah, why, we can hold the meeting, the next meeting in this place. Surely the beauty and the grandeur of it all will inspire spirited and lively debates about whether modern, whether modern day writers can match up to the classics. Yay. I might as well clear up the rest of my week and handle whatever affairs buying this mansion requires of me. I really want this mansion. <laughs> Any social activity can be put off until the Ermine Guard, or rather, the right, the right, the right mansion's great debut. Uh, I'll have my fill of great parties and gatherings, especially when I organize them myself. That sounds good. Cool. Although, with a project at this scope, we might need most of the day to tackle your concerns. Then it's all good. Yeah, I can do that. A more thorough inspection of the place is also preferable. Yes. Uh, breakfast then. It's a date. It's really not. <laughs> Just call it a date. Come on. All right, Monday, 10 o'clock sharp. Uh, we'll see you then. Actually, Marianne suggested that we meet at nine, but who is even awake at that hour? But who is even awake at that unholy hour? <laughs> My thoughts exactly on any AM like time period. I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went out. I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went all the way to Cardiff. Ha <laughs> me though. I was like, yeah, who the fuck gets up at like fucking 8 a.m.? Jesus. We say our goodbyes, shake hands, and make it clear without outright saying it that we now own this house. By the time we left the mansion ground, sunset is almost upon us. Okay. I wonder if the so ghost is gonna fuck. You really want to buy this place then? Yes, I do, honey. Uh, but anyways, I want to. I want to know if the ghost is gonna follow us like it did with Isabella. <gasps> That's a bit of a big impulse buy, even coming from you. I know, right? But it's your anniversary gift from me to you. Be happy. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. Of course, you always love it when I like flaunt my money. 
I feel elation when I hear those words from him. It's not every day one is able to please someone like Luke. Yes, he seems like a hard, hard pleaser. He gives away false flattery to sway those who starve for his attention and, and approval. But in the privacy of closed doors, he would often express his grievances. He neither censored himself in front of me, nor spared me from his criticism. Uh, you have been saying the penthouse is getting a bit too small for you. Happy anniversary! Oh. Uh, that time of the year already? Oh goodness, yes. He forgot about it last year too. Oh my god. I understand that he's busy- I understand that he's a busy man, but... Is that why you want to buy it? No. Yes. <laughs> You don't like it? I do. Okay. But I remember you used to talk about how you wanted to live next to the beach. Oh. Well, we could have a we could have a little cottage by the beach. Yeah? Botany Bay, Kent. I remember the sea, water that stretched for miles and miles as far as the eyes can see. As a kid, I loved our beach trips, swimming all day as much as I could. I was a well-behaved child, and the only time I was ever truly difficult was when I refused to get out of the waters, even when my fingers had gone all wrinkly. And even when they managed to keep, and even when they managed to pull me out of the water, there has there was always sandcastles. Wait, the day before we married, I told Luke that I wanted a house on a beach and a dog, and a kid or two. None of those came true. Seven years later, wow, not even a dog, really, God. That was a childish dream. Living next to the beach is so impractical if you really think about it. No. I don't know. It's not a bad thought to see you in a bathing suit every day. Oh, you. You. <laughs> Maybe another time, love. Well, we still have forever, don't we? He says nothing, only grabbing my hand and holding it tight as we spend the rest of the ride home in silence. Okay, I miss the sea. She's only saying that just for like a front, I guess. Sick and hovering over the loo at 3 in the morning, the picture I paint right now is hardly glamorous. Really? Is, she, are you, is it morning sickness? A horribly fishy taste is left in my mouth as I throw up what I had for dinner and I, ate, and I hate the acrid stench that fills the lavatory. The, the burning sensation at the back of my throat is of no help whatsoever. Yes, throwing up is not a great thing to experience, no matter how many times it's happened to me. People. I can feel another wave of nausea come up on me when the door opens. Hana, what are you doing so early out of bed? I'm throwing up a lung here, Luke, if you haven't noticed. I'm fine, love. I must have just eaten something bad. That's all I managed to say before vomiting again into the porcelain throne. Lovely. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. Just go back to bed, Luke. I'm going to clean up here. I refuse to look at him. I don't want to see him. I don't want him to see me like this. The last time I've ever had a horrible morning retching into a toilet was during my college years, being, being the life of the party. Right. Thoughtless and shameless, I had thrown away months of frivolous merriment and pointless hookups. I didn't even retain any of the connections I had made from that time. Sure, they still know of me and I still know of them, and we still do business from time to time. But I've lost touch with anyone who didn't see me on a daily basis. I hardly have any of the friends I had when I was still Hannah Evans. Teachers, fellow university students, drinking buddies, and old conquests like Jack. Huh, Jack? Who the fuck? Oh. No, don't touch me, sweetie. It's disgusting. I'm disgusting. Oh. Luke sits down next to me on the toilet floor to hold my hair even as I cough up more fish. Aww, look at him being such a caring husband now! He wipes the vomit from the corner of my mouth and just stares. Do I need to fire someone? I don't feel sick. Oh. Just feeling a bit under the weather, dear. It's been unbearably hot as of late, hasn't it? I do wish it would rain. Are you sure it wasn't those sweets? Who <laughs> told you not to eat those sweets? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, at the mansion. <laughs> Maybe. Well, don't laugh. Aw, they're being so cute right now. Well... <laughs> I can't help if you make that sort of face! <laughs> <laughs> he starts chuckling and soon enough he, he's in a fit of laughter. This, this scene happening next to a loo filled with sick just makes the whole thing bizarre and it nearly makes me start giggling as well. I try to, stif I try to stifle it though as I smack him on the shoulder. Stop! I'm not making a face, Luke. Stop laughing! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> I'm throwing up here! 
When he would not stop laughing, I let myself go as laughter bubbles from my own throat, and I forget whatever ill feelings plagued me. We are just husband and wife, laughing together at a, laughing together at a funny face, the little things in life. I let myself go because I know that these moments will not last forever. But if I just know the terrible things that are to come for us, I would have wished with everything I have then and there that the laughter stayed. Right. Oh, so she's talking as if like some batch is going down now. What's happening? Is it the ghost? Okay. October 26th, Wednesday. Oh, hiya. Come on now. Okay, so we're moving in? Are we really? Seriously? Anyways, let's do the journal. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, let's see. Uh, this is not us, is it? It's not labeled as new. Okay, this is all Isabella stuff. Okay, so there you go. So during the house, so during the open house, Hannah pressured the estate agents to sell her the mansion. The Wrights also met their interior designer. During the ride home, Hannah revealed that the mansion is her anniversary gift to Luke. For Luke, uh, things seemed to be looking good until Hannah suddenly fell ill later that night. I think she's pregnant. I honestly think she is. Okay. So the place is bustling with movers, carrying furnishings here and there, along with several trunks of personal belongings taken from our penthouse. Luke, uh, Luke watches them like a hawk, making sure nothing is handled carelessly or gets stolen. Careful now! Okay. I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African Blackwood and are one-of-a-kind commissioned paintings. Okay, wow. Okay, mortgage stuff. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you lot make. Okay, okay, God. Luke, do the dishwasher... Luke, do the dishwashers go into the kitchen or the butler's pantry? The kitchen. Pantry buttercup. Pantry? But dishwashers? What? Careful, that's a maho- That is mahogany! <laughs> is, it, is that what he's gonna say? No, no, you there, put that down. You do not manhandle a Napoleon Abueva. You do not handle a manhandle a Napoleon Abueva. <laughs> God. I can see the exasperation, and I have to send the foreman an apologetic glance. Yeah, sorry. Even Johan rolls his eyes as he goes by. Considering Luke is always like this during a project, Johans and I have gotten used to it. Poor Marianne, on the other hand, looks a bit stressed at seeing the gigantic mess before quickly going back to work. Everything just has to be perfect exactly the way he wants it. One little thing out of place, one little thing that didn't fit the image he clearly constructed in his head, and Luke gets bent out of shape. God, he's so anal. <laughs> Sweetie, why don't we go and sort your suit upstairs? Yeah, your suit's upstairs. Uh, let Johans and Marianne and the foreman deal with the rest of the work. Yes. We have this, Mrs. Wright. Okay, cool. Yes, please do go before a blood vessel bursts. Blood stains are so troublesome to clean. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, taking him by the hand, I laid him upstairs to our bedroom. All right. So this place has been arranged first so that we can get some rest, no matter what state the rest of the mansion is in. Of course. Because that's important. I am definitely glad I can just lie down on a soft, comfy bed after what has been a busy morning. Watching Luke act like... Uh, watching Luke act like his life depended on getting this move done is tiring all on its own, right? And to think I have a whole day of this ahead of me. I feel the bed dip beside me as Luke sits down with a sigh. Well, I can't wait for this to be over. I know, moving is always such a hassle and like even then moving to a big house full of rich people too. I don't know, it's fun seeing you all fired up here at home and not at work, you know? You know I can't always be home, Hana. I have a company to run, unless you've forgotten. Oh, right, right. I haven't forgotten. You're the one who insists on being there to make sure each and every little thing is under control. Oh my god, he's like a micromanager, Jesus. I just... I just really miss you sometimes, and I wish you were at home more often. Why, if you're not careful, I might go a bit loopy and I'll start bringing cats home. And soon enough, one day, you'll find yourself going home to a farm just filled with felines that follow you everywhere. Oh, don't bluff. The things would shred up your precious furniture. Oh, <laughs> you caught me there. Besides, you don't even like cats. Aww. <laughs> true, true. Dogs are infinitely superior, of course. But what about the wet dog smell? The mess? I'm not cleaning up after a mutt, no matter how cute. Oh, come on. If you think about it, a cat would be better. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh. Aww. It's not always that we can just lie down and... Yeah, it's not always that we can just lie down and talk about these sort of things. To joke around as if we're teenagers again, with very little problem in the way of responsibilities and roles. 
To hear his genuine, honest to goodness laughter is a rarity. This is just the second time as of late, and I cannot, and I can only see it as a sign, and I can only see it as signs of good things to come. Yeah, that's what you think. All good points. I guess we could just have kids. That is, if you prefer dealing with soiled nappies and sick as opposed to dead birds, mice, and litter boxes. I've already told Marianne about turning the second bedroom into a children's room. Uh, I guess sometimes I don't know when I'm crossing a line. I didn't say that I am a good comedian, didn't I? I didn't say that I am a good comedian, did I? Not this again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, same. I'd rather have cats and pets and furry babies rather than actual babies. What? I... I wasn't being serious. It's not something you take the piss out of. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Having a kid is a big responsibility, Hana. Yes, it actually is, Hana. We've talked about this, haven't we? We... We... I'm not ready to be a parent. I'd probably end up killing the little brat by the week's end. Yes. <laughs> Same. Uh, what should I say? You'll be a great father. Apologize for bringing it up. No, I think you'll be a great father. Okay. <laughs> I think you'll be a great father. Let's just try to keep the relationship up. Like, I want to have good repertoire with him. Kylie likes you well enough. Uh, the mention of our little goddaughter places a conflicted look on his face. Sometimes it is cute when he denies having a soft spot for the little girl. But then, sometimes it's sad and it makes me wonder what happened to make him think so poorly of himself in this regard. Poor father figure, probably? Yes, well, it's Kylie. It's Kylie. The tyke likes everybody and, on the off chance she doesn't, likes them well enough as long as they buy her sweets. Huh. And sure, that kid is great, but if I get tired of her, I can ship her back to her father at the end of the day. Right. <laughs> Jeez. Having kids of our own will be a whole different monster entirely. Right, because you can't ship them off back to, you know, their parents. I have never heard him talk about his father in anything but a business context. Uh, I recall Damien Wright kept hearing about him from my own father even before I met Luke. Right? I told you, bad father figure. <laughs> the business world praised for him for running a tight ship, and all until one mistake led to a great loss for the Enterprise. Oh, it was then that news of Luke Wright, a prodigy son, of su prodigy son and successor to the old man, started to show up and he aided in its recovery and growth up until the Great Recession. I'm getting a bit off track. Regardless, I have never heard of him talk about his father like one would talk about family. I think you'll be a great father. There's a smile no matter how half-hearted it might be. I do really think that. He might not be a good, honest man, a part of me knows that, though I tried to silence it. But I know Luke well enough that he will be a better father than either Damien Wright or Henry Evans. I love my father, but he, ne but he never had the time, right? If it is any consolation, I think you'd be a decent mother. Aw, thank you. Just decent? Okay. On the other hand, I have never heard of his mother. A silence settles, both comfortable and uncomfortable. There is a familiarity in each other's company despite the awkwardness that had, that had transpired. Defenses and masks down, without anybody else looking, we are both together and alone in this quiet. Oh shit. But a crash from the dis- but from- but a crash from downstairs startles us both out of our reverie. Oh, there goes the fine china! <laughs> Luke lets out a heavy sigh before coming up to his feet, straining and straining his jacket. I'll have to attend to that then. Yep. <laughs> Be good, darling. Don't blow up the house. And watch out for your blood pressure. He gives me a kiss on the cheek before leaving while I lay there in a daze. Alone as per usual. I really should be used to it by now. Oh, okay. Let's see what we're, what's written here. Aww, <laughs> these little darlings. The right couple moved to their newly bought mansion today and was already preparing for a housewarming party. During a short break, the couple had a brief discussion about children. Luke didn't sound too welcoming of the idea. Ah, so this is like, I would imagine this is what their children would look like. Aw, that's cute. But anyways, yeah. So I can feel the minutes tick by with me just lying there, feeling miserable and full of self-pity. I have rolled over to lie on my stomach t at this point, with my face buried into the pillows when there's a knock at the door. Okay. Grumbling at them to go away doesn't work as a voice comes from the other side. Madam, the photographer from Luxury Living is here. Oh no, I gotta deal with people now. Wait, is that today? 
Oh, yes. Yeah. People had caught wind of our new mansion the very moment we left the open house. Luke had boasted he could acquire the property in no time and allowed a photo shoot for an interior design magazine to be scheduled today. Well, well, there were complications, and it took longer than it usually does for us. Okay. In a minute, Hansi. Yeah. Johannes. Yeah. If Johannes. you could at least make it through the end. Ah, uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, in a minute, Hansi. Hansi, just wait. Tell them I'll be right down, Hansi. Bye, Hansi. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Okay, so the mansion grounds has been one of the first things to be fixed up aside from the bedroom. Yes, gotta have that and what's it called? The landscaping done. Although it's still although it's still a work in progress, it had a promising start and I can already see the flower patches. Luke's fav Luke's favorite daffodils stand out easily, having been transplanted from the pots that used to litter the rooftop of our penthouse. Okay. Why, if the moving crew thought that Luke was being hard on them, they clearly didn't see the landscaper on his way out. The man looked like he was ready to faint, and Luke seemed ready to kill him by the end of our discussion. By the end of their discussion. Hey, it's Zack! What the hell? It is the gardens that I see him. It's standing near the. It is in the gardens that I see him standing near the flowers in quiet admiration. He is hard to miss, the hulk of a man that clearly did not belong, and the big backpack and suitcase he has with him makes him look much larger. In a, it is a peculiar sight seeing someone who looks like he does handling. What? It's a peculiar sight seeing someone who looks like he does handling little delicate things with such care. Oh, okay. So he looks up from the gardens and does a double take before a friendly face replaces his serene expression. Miss Wright, yeah? Hi, uh, Zachary Steele here from Luxury Living, ma'am. Okay. Hope you weren't waiting too long. Yes, no. But it looks like you're still moving in, huh? Yep, lots of stuff to move in. Thought for a second there my calendar was wrong and I came here too early. No. <laughs> the one and only. Alright, welcome, welcome to mentioned Mons... Ma Maison de Right. There we go. <laughs> Maison de Right. So, and yes, we've been in the process of moving in as we were, as we were delayed, but it won't be a problem. They're just adding a few things here and there, but you should still be able to do your work. Uh, where's the rest of your crew then, Mr. Steele? Zack is fine, please. Mr. Steele makes me feel like I'm a mascot for a cleaning product. Mr. Steele. <laughs> True. You're right, you're right. Anyway, I'll be your one-man crew for today. Don't worry, been doing this gig for a while now. Okay, I trust you. Uh, you must be quite the veteran to handle this on your own. Uh, we've had a few, we've had a full crew coming into our penthouse the last time we were covered in your magazine. Veteran? Wow. Oh, you, your words are too kind, Miss Wright. <laughs> Hana. Uh, if I get to call you Zack, you have my permission to call me Hana. Alrighty then. Alrighty. <laughs> anyway, I'm no veteran, but I know my camera well enough to make sure this is a good shoot. You can trust me on that, Miss Wright. Da Hana. Hana. Yes. All right, let's get to it. All right. So Zachary proves quickly enough that I can, that I can, in fact, trust him. His skills with the camera and experience in this industry, at the very least. So he is kind and courteous, listening and following as I lead him around the house. A really nice fellow, and he treats our household staff well whenever we cross paths with them. I answer his questions to the best of my ability, and he is patient enough to answer mine whenever I get curious enough. Uh, for one, I ask what the bags. Uh, for one, I ask what the bags are for. They are quite the magician's toolkit. From inside, he had procured several items to embellish the interior with. Bowls of fruits, lemons, trays with... What? Bowls of fruits, lemons, trays with pepper mills, stacks of cookbooks, cutting boards, and glass canisters filled with colorful nuts and grains are bought in for a kitchen setting. Whoa! Okay. For the bathroom, there are white towels, seashells, and decorative soaps. There are other things as well, too numerous to count, all in that large backpack and suitcase. Is that really what they do? Really? Tricks of the trade. Softens up a room, makes a place feel more homey, and fills it up with texture. Oh, okay, okay, well, it makes sense, because I feel like, because they're just moving in, they don't have that many stuff to put in. But you guys probably have better stuff I can use for this. Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. No lights? Don't tell me all these are just props. Well, I've got my tripod here. For things like these, natural light is best. Right. I'll just have to set the shutter speed to a real slow setting, and as long as nobody steps into the shot, it'll look great. Okay. Wow, Mr. Photographer indeed. Oh, it better. 
We go through the rooms one at a time, although we first tackle the ones that the movers were no business have no business in anymore. Okay, yeah. Ooh, this is pretty. The ballroom needs a little the ballroom needs little preparation with its grand design. Although there is some trouble at first with the wide open space and the pictures being backlit. Yes, but it still looks really nice. It is in the kitchen that Zachary's props come in handy. Uh, considering how Johan's uh, kept the place so neat and sterile, one can practically eat off the floor. Yes. So we carry on touring the house and taking pictures where we can, with exception to the rooms which have yet to gain any purpose or design. Too bad I can't take a sneak peek at his photos yet. Funnily enough, he is using a traditional camera. I didn't even know film still existed. Wow, really? Uh, with the way he speaks, however, I can see that he knows enough about his craft that I'm not too worried about botched photographs. Okay. I imagine photography must be cathartic for him, judging by how at ease he looks while taking pictures. There are small snippets of conversations in between the clickings of the cameras. Yeah, the, click the clicking of the camera. He even goes as far as to talk about these terminologies like shutter speeds and, op and aperture when I ask about the technical aspects. Yes, I know all about that. <laughs> I can't quite see the pictures as it is made, but much like when I watch artists paint on the canvas, on their canvas. But just watching someone passionately practicing their craft such as this is exciting in its own way. Going through the many rooms has been quite the exercise for the both of us, right? And I, the mansion is huge too, and there's multiple rooms. Probably like 50 of them. Oh. Despite that, he has been so nice and I find myself putting on my best smile. And I'm pretty sure the ghost is going to appear behind me in the picture. But it is as but it is as we're taking pictures in the foyer that everything comes to a standstill for a moment. Why? What? Just a moment. And have I not been paying attention, I wouldn't have even noticed. It is, me it is merely a split second when Zachary's rhythm is put to a halt. <gasps> there we go! <laughs> his finger doesn't move to release the shutter. Yet he also doesn't pull the camera away from his face, gaze still firmly fixed through the viewfinder. His hands shake and there is a light sheen of sweat on his forehead. Zachary? No response. Uh, Zach, is something the matter? Lowering his camera, he blinks and stares at something behind me before shaking his head. Yep, nothing. Yep. Oh shit. <laughs> Turning around though, I see nothing that could have gotten his attention. Oh, oh no, no, there, 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 there's nothing wrong. I, I just remembered something that saw. See, now Zach sees it and now he's gonna go to the Isabella. He's be like, girl, I saw the ghost and it was hella scary. Uh, let's get back to the pictures. Okay. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? Yes. I struggle to respond this time. There's a sudden weight on my back and an indescribable tightness around my throat. Yes, everything stops. And everything starts again as I manage to choke out. If you're sure. Okay, I don't know what just happened. It, it was probably just a dizzy spell. Nope, it's a haunting. I'm fine, yes. And he said he's fine. We continue at the same pace as before, although there's an unspoken agreement that we will not talk about what happened. <laughs> All right, so is this a full-time job for you then? Nah, I just freelance mostly for magazines, newspapers, and events. So you can't really call it a full-time job. All right, but you still make a pretty good living, right? It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he wants to make movies. At he least wants to, not all the time. At least not. He wants to be a filmmaker. Oh, what is it that you want to do then? Maybe I've been out of line sticking my nose into other people's business, but I can't help but ask. I regret doing so as he, as I see his shoulders slump and the easygoing air he has fades away. Uh, he looks torn over whether he wants to talk about it or not. Films. Documentaries, mostly. Yes. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? Yes, it is. I was working on this thing, actually. Mm-hmm. What thing? Well, it wasn't really a big thing. Well... People didn't like Blue Foncy very much. Uh... Uh, people didn't like a film about colors? Uh, I suppose they would have liked Blue Bebe a lot more. Very funny. <laughs> uh, so Grand Director, do you want to tell me what do you want to tell me what Blue Fonse is all about? He hesitates. 
but when I refuse to budge on the matter, he gives in and spills it all out. Bleu foncé, l'heure la plus sombre des noirs britanniques. Yes. Dark blue, the darkest hours of the black British. Yes, that's why I, I got, I gathered from that too. So my limited amount of French. <laughs> He speaks with passion of one of who has gone through the very matter he is concerned with. There is conviction, knowledge, and experience in his speech. Why, I would have told him that he is an amazing speaker if only I wasn't so engrossed, listening. Prejudice and discrimination in schools and in workplace. Less of chances for opportunity and higher chances of being treated like a criminal. He spoke of blacks and people of color in general still being treated like second-class citizens. All because of the color of their skin. Right. It is all just positively riveting. And sad. It comes to a point wherein he'd soon lose his steam, he looks abashed, realizing what he had just done. Sorry, I just got so carried away. No! It's fine, it really is so fascinating to watch people talk about their passion after all, right? You should see how your eyes light up when you speak so fiercely. You do have a beautiful eye. You do have very beautiful eyes. Yes, you do! Uh-huh. Thanks! I guess. I guess. <laughs> I want to say that I understand where he's coming from. But I really don't, do I? Yeah, I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, and I've lived a charmed life. It hasn't been perfect, but the difficulties I've been through pales in comparison to what others experience on a daily basis. Wow, recognizing your privileges! Yeah, Hannah! I certainly don't know how I would have fared were it any different. Would I still have met Luke and would... And would he still have loved me if I was any lesser? What was your home like? These things to talk about, it sounds like you've... Yeah, these things you talk about, it sounds like if you... Well, I don't mean to pry, I mean... Hmm? Uh, <laughs> Live with my older sister and my grandparents. Yes, okay. We had a shop selling all sorts of things below our pop... Sorry, flat. Yeah, flat. <laughs> and well, I was one of the few non-white, non-British students in class. Right. I didn't get pushed around or anything straight up. Even then, I was one of the biggest kids around. Yeah. But a pencil and notebook would go missing, you know? Yeah. Oh, that I knew. Children can be so cruel at times. Of course, it may be a slightly different story when you have, a pers when you have personal guards, and the stolen items is not a pencil but an expensive heirloom. So what about you? How you liking your new house? It's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. It's nice, I suppose. You suppose? I suppose. <laughs> Not big enough? No, 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 it's just... What? No! Oh, don't be a bully. It's just that... Uh... I understand if you don't want to talk about it. Yeah. I was a little girl, all dolled up and treated like a fragile... And treated like fragile porcelain, with nursemaids waiting to me hand and foot. All the material possessions anyone could ever want, I could ask for a I could ask for on a whim, and it would be handed to me just like that. But I barely saw my parents, just goodbye kisses in the mornings before they went off to who knows where they were needed to next. I saw them more often on the telly or in the papers than I ever did in person. Yep. I remember my old house. It was a lot like this one. Big walls and big halls, but nobody in it. Not really. It makes you think how alone you are. Yes, a pensive mood overcomes us, and there's a moment where neither of us are sure of how. It, and there's a moment where neither of us are sure how are sure of how to go on from here, from there. Yes. Oh God, things have gotten a bit too personal. Yet it isn't wholly uncomfortable, like as if we've been friends before. Well, that's normal, ain't it? You just moved here. <laughs> there's an underlying story to it, Zach, but it's okay. You'll make home out of it yet. Yeah. yeah. He certainly makes it easy to believe that. My childhood house is indeed a lot like this one. Just as large and extravagant. And just as empty. I hope he's right. Yeah, I mean, I'll get pets if I have to. <laughs> so, Monsieur le photogra Photographe, you've, co you've covered the one and only Ermengarde Mansion. What's next on the agenda? The interview? Oh, really? Boring. It's an interior design and housing magazine. And they want to know what Miss Wright has to say about her interior design and house. But you should ask Macaulay about that. Uh, Hannah Wright thinks she bought a magnificent house that she can certainly brag about. Blah blah boring. You know what they should print more of? I watched an interesting documentary the other day. 
Blur Francais, The Darkest Hours of the, Brit of the Black British. I recommend you watch it. <gasps> Aww, isn't she such a sweetie? Those are the things that people should know about. What do they care if I use a purple or green bowl of fruit in my kitchen? People, right? People, yeah. We oui, people are shite. Yes. What do you think? Do I look good with, with this angle? I strike a pose while he's being busy, looking, taking a back, looking, taking it aback for a moment, probably not expecting me to just go and say such a cross word. <laughs> but he recovers quickly, and after snapping a few shots, he grins. Yeah. Vous êtes belle. Aw, oh, thank you. You want copies of these ones? Yes. Yes, please. So, the big boy knows French. Uh, you must have wooed a few ladies, unless you're into gents. Uh, either way, French is, after all, the language of romance. Yes. No, oh, I don't know about quoting fancy poetry. <laughs> but I've made lunch for a girl before, and they did like that fancy French cuisine. Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> Tell me all about it, Zachary. <laughs> Can you cook? Can you cook bula? Oh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I can cook just about anything as long as I know the recipe. Ooh, okay. C'est magnifique. Yes. Uh, it has been too long since I've had a nice and proper chat with a good friend. No, Lee is certainly not a good friend. Yeah, no, Lee is certainly not a good friend. And although we've just met, Zachary is a sort of Zachary is a sort who can probably befriend anyone, right? He's just a comfortable person to be around, right? A bit too comfortable. Oh come on! Get out, get out there, like Hannah. Make some like common people friend. The photo shoot went by a breeze, and somehow, and somewhere along the way, as we talk and laugh, I find myself getting a bit too close without realizing. He'll give me the strange look until I back off, and he'll go back to asking questions after I agreed to do his little interview. And it's just odd. What? Well, no. Me being friendly isn't that odd. That is how I am. Zach. Zachary is the one that's being odd. Right, the whole ghost thing? Why, anyone else would absolutely welcome the extra attention I give them. He, on the other hand, looks almost flustered about it. Not used to it, I guess. He should be used to different personalities by now, having to deal with various people when he works. And if not, he needs to start. Perhaps nobody has shown him attention of this kind. But he's a big boy, he should be able to handle me. Oh god, Hannah, please, girl, don't scare him. All it was, all it was, all it is, is a friendly touch here, a pretty smile there, a gentle swaying of the hips as I move around. And gentle swaying of the hips as I move around. Zachary grew more, Zachary grew and grew more red every time he noticed. Am I being mean as I find enjoyment in seeing him unravel? Perhaps, yes. God, Hannah. This went on during the interview and beyond that. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing, right? <laughs> Zachary and I are just having a playful, friendly chat while enjoying the outside view. Of course you are, Hannah. <laughs> At least that's how I see it. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm really getting distracted. Yeah, by my good looks, right? <laughs> Jesus. Could you maybe stop doing that? Yes. Stop? Oh. I'm not sure if I want to though. Continue teasing, stop it. No, we don't want to make you uncomfortable. Hana, stop. Don't do that, stop it. I'll stop it if it makes you uncomfortable, sweetie. Is that good? Did you get points for it? Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah, I'll stop it if it makes you uncomfortable, sweetie. Sorry. Yeah. No, I should be the one apologizing. Why, you're a shy one, aren't you, big guy? Uh, it's not that, but. You're a married woman. <laughs> He gestures to the ring on my finger and lets the fact of the matter hang heavily between us. Right. See, told you. Being told implicitly that I am too forward is not a common occurrence. I think I'm more stunned at the fact that he pointed it out rather than, well, being rejected. Not that anything is going to happen between us in the first place. It was just going to be some harmless flirting, right? But still, girl! So, you've never had a girlfriend? No. No, too busy with work. Too busy getting that money. No boyfriend either. You know, just in case you were gonna ask for that one next. Yeah. <laughs> and you haven't even had your first kiss. Not a one, ma'am. Uh-huh. Uh, do you want to have your first kiss today? Oh my god, Hannah! You womanizer! I mean, not womanizer. You man-eater! <laughs> man-eater! <laughs> I can't help it. I really, really can't, and I'm going to apologize lots later. 
Surely, by the catty smile on my face, it is obvious that I'm just pulling his leg. <laughs> the laugh I fa the laugh I failed to contain certainly gives it away if it still has if it still isn't obvious. But still, he lights up in embarrassment, stammering and sputtering objections. You're married, and, and this will be extremely unprofessional. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I never said I would kiss you, silly. Oh, Johan. No, what? No, no. Uh, what? No. Don't call your butler. She's hot. Huh? <laughs> that would be for the better. I don't think his husband would appreciate it if I made him kiss another man. Oh, I do not think he can hear us from here either. Uh, but it is hard to think that you're not taken, Zachary. Why, whoever becomes your girlfriend will be so lucky to have you. You can cook and take wonderful photographs, right? Wonderful meals and wonderful memories. I can play guitar too. <gasps> oh my, aren't you a full package? You can. Oh my, wonderful serenades as well then. Perhaps I can find a young lady who deserves a fine strapping young gentleman like yourself. Yeah, I can hook you up, girl. Boy, homeboy. Let's not get carried away. Oh, come on. <laughs> Besides, I gotta be going. It's getting late and I got someplace else to be. Okay. Alright. A shame. I will be expecting you again soon, I hope, for a copy of my photographs, yes? Of course. I'll even deliver them personally. Yes. Thank you. Just, you know, don't try to make me kiss your butler when I drop by. Okay. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> As fate would have it, the very moment the words leave his mouth, Johan comes out of the house. Judging by the sight of... Judging by the slight raise of his eyebrows, uh, he has heard only the tail end of the sentence. There shall be no kissing of any butlers under this roof, Danke. Uh, <laughs> but you are not under a roof, are you, Hansi? To my amusement, he takes a step back, safely placing himself within the threshold of the foyer and under the roof of the house. Now I am. <laughs> and just as ever, he is quick to return and, and just as ever, he is quick to return with a sardonic reply. I am now. Yeah. <laughs> I like you, Johans. As I was saying, madam, it's about time for supper. Okay. Dinner. Will I be needing to set an extra place at the table? Yeah, you want to stay for dinner? Oh, what? No, I was just leaving, actually. Are you sure? So, you have a good night, Hana. Okay. And you too, Hansy. <laughs> it was nice to meet you, Zach, honey. You have a safe you have a safe trip. Yeah. He nods and the grin on his he nods in the grin on his face as we uh, what? He nods in the grin on his face as we say our goodbyes. It's the sweetest that I have ever seen. There we go. Aww. I linger, looking up for him with his relatively tiny bicycle, backpack safely secured in the basket by the front, and suitcase hooked to the back. I watch as he went down the path back to Anson Village until he is nothing more than a blip in the horizon. I cannot help the small smile on my face as I go inside for supper. Ah, Zack. Oh, it's nighttime in this mansion. Oh my, you know shit's gonna go down. Entering the dining hall causes me so much confusion. It is dark. For a moment, I thought the electric work is not up to par. Uh, but that clearly is not the case, as every other room is bright with artificial light. Finding the light switch is a moment is a monumental task, considering the size of my unfamiliarity with the. Considering the size and my unfamiliarity with the room, right? So you, gotta, you just gotta, you just gotta spill up the wall. Just gotta grope the wall until you you find the light switch. <laughs> so, anyways, we got a, a journal entry. So let's see how that's that's it. That's like. So Hana met Zachary Steele, a freelance photographer from Luxury Living and Interior Design Magazine. So Zachary was tasked to interview Hana and to take pictures of the mansion and its new owners. What should have been a professional meeting ended up being friendly and perhaps too personal. Uh -huh. <laughs> Anyways. To make matters worse, the darkness grants the room a different atmosphere, eerie and frightening. Right. This is why I don't want to own a huge mansion, even if I had the money. It's just, ugh. It takes longer than I thought to find the switch, something that will have to be rectified later on. My skin starts to prickle, and there is a distinct feeling of being watched. It unsettles me and only spurs me on in my search. Where's that light switch, damn it? <laughs> and when I do open the lights, there's a hiss. I'll turn the lights down, woman! Oh my god, are you drunk? Really? There at the end of the hall is my beloved husband with his face in one hand and a glass in the other. What the hell? What kind of green drink is that? Are you drinking absinthe? What is this? Perhaps I can let it go if it's only one glass of wine. Oh, but it's absinthe. <laughs> yes. However, I can feel myself go livid after seeing the toxic green liquid gleam mockingly at me. 
Luke, what? Are you drinking absinthe? Oh my goodness gracious. Where did you even find it? You know what the doctor said. Absinthe, Luke. Are you, actively are you actively trying to kill yourself? Because if you are, we can just hit you with a bloody car. Honeybee, buttercup. Not too loud, please. But still, girl, you know how much- You know the, co you know the alcohol concentration of absinthe is? It's like fucking 48% or some sh crazy shit like that. Besides, it's Lelouch, not too strong. Just hair of the dog that bit me. Oh my god, he is just... Girl, still, I don't care if it's just Lelouch, whatever the fuck that is. But seriously though, just one shot of absinthe and you're like fucking... Like, you're hungover already. Like, not even drunk, you just go through the entire process of being hungover. You're taking a whole glass of it. Helps with the hangover, dearest. Are you sure? You drank? When? This morning, love. Don't be mad. Yo, oh my god. I just needed a few drinks, having to deal with those simpletons. Oh my god. And maybe I had one too much. Uh-huh, clearly. You don't see me whinging about you leaving me to handle them on my own. <sighs> uh, I had to attend to the photo shoot and interview with Living Luxury, you know that. We're luxury living, yeah. Living luxury. Yeah, it's the same thing. Same way, we're living in luxury. Let's not make this about me, Luke. This is about you and your drinking problem, and... Oh, I don't know, Hana, darling. Oh, my God, here we go. What if my drinking problem, as you like to call it, is linked to you? What? What do you mean if it's... What? Wait, how? Tell me. If we think about it that way, this discussion is about you. Okay, tell me how your drinking problem is related to me. That was pretty mean of you, leaving me alone to do all the work like that. But I was doing other shit! You can't use the interview as an excuse either, honey! Why not? I was informed the moment your little interview was done. So, what was it then, hmm? What were you doing? I... <laughs> Damn, he's calling us out on our flirty tactics. Maybe, maybe he noticed. Yeah, maybe he noticed that we were flirting, low-key flirting with Zack? Whoa, what's it gonna be? Should I tell the truth or tell a little lie? I don't think... No, I don't think we should be lying to him. Like, that would ruin our relation, our strained relationship with him already, so... You know what, let's just be truthful. I was with Zachary, because it's true. I was talking with Zachary, the photographer for Luxury Living. I have no reason to tell lies. It's not like I'm guilty of anything. Right? Exactly, that too. So, that... Gave us, yeah, a little bit more points with him, because, you know, we're telling the truth. But as Luke's expression turns, he makes me feel like I actually am to blame for something, of course. He has a way of making me laid bare with just a look. Uh, that had really struck me when we first met years ago. That giant negro? <gasps> Bruh, that ain't cool. Bruh. You were having a secret meeting behind my back and it was with him? Bruh, that's not cool. What are you implying? I'm implying nothing. Uh, then what's with the accusatory tone? What? I'm just worried. You know better than to trust those media types, Buttercup. Media types? What? You must have been really friendly to occupy your time like that. Oh my goodness. Okay. But all he's looking for is his next big headline. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, he's a photographer for an interior design magazine, not like some gossip, like, uh, what's it called, like, peoples. Doesn't matter. You let one little thing slip, one wrong move, and it'll blow up in the telly in the morning. <sighs> He'll go to his journalist friends to gossip and make a quick quid. Oh my god. His eyes were the first thing I noticed about him. Yeah, they were like a nature. They were like nature, the grass and the trees, wonderful and breathtaking. Well, now as I look at them, they're nothing but the same shade of green as the bloody damn drink in his hand. Yeah, but he was a perfect gentleman, Luke. Right? He like was like, lady, stop it. He was like, lady, you need to stop doing what you're doing right now. Like, you need to stop flirting with me. I can't say the same for you as of recent, right? Excuse me again. We're talking about you, Hana. What? What about- No, I'm pretty sure we were talking about you and your drinking problem, Luke, right? Yes. Hangover forgotten during the course of this little spat, the man jumps to his feet and sees. It looks like he is barely stopping himself from throwing the nearest thing he can find. Oh, it is not a problem. I can stop whenever I want. Man, why are you so like- <sighs> And even if it was, 
I think you can very well stay out of it, as it only affects my own kidneys or liver or whatever the bloody hell that shite pollutes. Oh my god. Whatever aftermath that occurs because of your little chit chat with the Negro affects the both of us, however. What the f. Look, 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 Luke, nothing will happen. You have to relax. It was just a friendly chat. Well, now I think I'm getting jealous. Oh my god. Or I would be if it weren't for this damn headache. Just when I thought I was starting to like him because he was like, he has this sweet moment, so nah, girl, mm -mm, Luke, you are not earning any brownie points with me right now. Hannah, why are you even married to him? You're rich enough to afford your own shit. Why do you need him? Maybe you should drink more. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't, like, you seem to not even care about your goddamn liver, okay? Whatever, fine. I don't care if you die from alcohol poisoning or if you, or if your liver fails. Supper is spent in silence with nothing but the occasional sound of silverware. A grand feast has been served, well, grander than usual anyway, but most likely due to Luke's complaints of stress. Oh, but it looks really good though. I love that fish. <laughs> A platter of native oysters for starters, and tran and tranch tranch of turbot with purple sprouting broccoli, lemon lemon capers, and anchovy sauce for mains. Yes. Ooh, yes. To finish it all off, black tea and golden syrup sponge pudding with custard. But when our appetites are appeased and the plates have cleared and the plates are cleared away, Luke stands, kisses me goodnight, and leaves me to stare at my half-empty cup. Lonely in the lull of night, I sit in a house too big and too empty, foreign and unwelcoming. Uh, even in its warm tone and homely decor, it feels cold. Right. There's no need for tears, however. I know I can get through this like every other obstacle I have faced before. This is a minor setback in what I hope will be a long and happy life. Yeah. For you, girl. Like, I feel like Hana is a, is a, you know, she's a decent human being. Like, a little flirty when she shouldn't really be, but can you really blame her because Luke and her marriage with him, and he seems so, like, you know, strained with this relationship? To remind myself that this place is for Luke and for our future children fills me with a renewed vigor. Besides, it looks like someone is having a cry already. Oh, no. The wailing is far away and muffled. Oh no, girl. <laughs> you should be worried. You shouldn't be like, Ah, oh, yes, I have a soul who who seems to sympathize for me. Like, I feel you, girl, but no, girl, this is this is problematic. Yet at the same time, it makes... Yet at the same time, it shakes me to my very core as I hear it. As if the suffering is just standing right beside me, because it probably is. Hearing it sends a chill down my spine and makes my skin prickle with goosebumps. Goodness gracious. Don't go investigate. Who is that? Oh, <laughs> don't go. Don't go. Oh. Okay. Oh, curiosity sinks in as I follow the sorrowful sound into the kitchen. Oh no, girl. We are not doing this today. We are not doing this today. Uh, guys, I think I'm going to leave it here for now because I think this is a great cliffhanger to leave it here. We got some more ghostly paranormal activities that Hannah is about to experience aside from the one in the mirror. Which she, she like for like whatever the fuck reason was so chill about it. Like I don't even know. Oh, I totally didn't realize that this popped up. J shit. Okay, hold on. Sorry about that. This whole thing just kind of popped up. Probably can ignore it. But anyways, yeah. So like, anyways, I'm gonna leave it here for now, you guys. We can continue on in the story and like invest, do some paranormal activity investigation in the next episode. And but until then, you guys, bye. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrink